How pathetic. Now stand still so I won't make a mess. DreamWorks Animation. While they've created some great and memorable villains throughout the dozens and dozens of films they've made, they've also given us some villains that we aren't as fond of. Today, we've narrowed our picks down to what we consider the eight absolute worst. Whether they were generic, annoying, unintimidating, or all three, these were the villains we could do without. I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and this is the worst DreamWorks villains and why they suck. Starting us off in eighth place, we have Prince Charming from Shrek the Third. While Prince Charming might have had a major role in the best film out of the entire Shrek franchise, he's also unfortunately the main antagonist in the series' worst film. That already is enough to make us consider him the worst villain in the series, but even when you look at his character within the film, he doesn't stack up against the likes of Farquaad, the Fairy Godmother, nor even Rumpelstiltskin. Charming's main flaw as a villain is that he's incompetent. Most of the other characters in the film see him as the butt of a joke and rarely take him seriously. Someday, you'll be sorry. When even Pinocchio is messing with you, it kind of undersells the idea that you pose a real threat to anyone in the film. Prince Charming is also hurt by the fact that he's a villain we've already seen in the series. To be completely honest, Charming was also a pretty flat character in the second film, but he had the fairy godmother to work off of, which made him both funnier and more compelling as a villain. But as the main villain, with no other characters to bounce off of, he falls short. We also have to say that his plan is far from a well thought out one. He arranges a play that will feature the death of Shrek, once and for all cementing himself as the hero of the story and Shrek as the villain. However, by this point in the series, the people of Far Far Away adore Shrek and simultaneously loathe Charming. We get that this prince is full of himself and is a total narcissist, but this feels too goofy even for him. We've given Charming a pretty bad ride up here, so you might be wondering why exactly he's only at this spot on the list. Well, even though he's the worst villain of this franchise, he at least had a fun appearance in Shrek 2. That's one worthwhile film this character was featured in, and that's something that cannot be said for any of the other villains we'll be discussing today. Overall, Charming here is proof that sometimes an evil sidekick should stick to that role, and only that role. As bad as Charming is, there's at least a semblance of creativity to his character arc and evil plan that cannot be said for the next villain, Makunga. Originating from the second Madagascar flick, Makunga is a manipulative lion who wants to become the alpha member of the pack. Sounds a little familiar? It probably does, because it's not too far off from being Scar's plan in The Lion King. It is that sense of unoriginality that puts Makunga into this spot on our list. Makunga is essentially indistinguishable from Scar. From his personality to his plan, the two are basically one and the same. But while Scar was intended intimidating and scary, Makunga is anything but. He's far too goofy to take seriously, with even the other characters having trouble seeing him as a threat. If he turned out to be a rehash of Scar, but was genuinely dangerous, his character wouldn't be as bad. Unfortunately, this character being primarily played for laughs dooms this character to forever be stuck in Scar's shadow. I think this would go very nicely for me when I go out hiking. Makunga's a villain as unoriginal as he is scary, and that's why he ends up on this list. The only thing that saves him from a worse position is that there are plenty of other dreamers works antagonists who have him beat in the bland department. Now, if Makunga was hard to take seriously, you haven't seen anything until you meet Galaxar from Monsters vs. Aliens. Galaxar is an alien bent on wiping out all life on Earth and repopulating it with his own extinct species. That actually sounds like an intriguing motivation for a villain, but unfortunately for Galaxar, the film uses him as a tool for more laughs and little else. In a movie already full of wacky and weird characters, Galaxar could have been an effective way of grounding the movie. Had he been a more serious and darker character, he would have served as an interesting contrast to the colorful monsters he goes up against. Instead, he's little more than another loud-mouthed and exaggerated character in a movie already full of them. I come in peace, and you know harm, and you all will die. It leaves us with a villain who just gets lost in the crowd of characters rather than standing out. For example, would you like to know why he wiped out his entire species? Why? It's because his wife wanted kids, of course! Again, this would have been a great opportunity to give Galaxar a genuine emotional core and make him a villain even more interesting than the heroes. Sadly, what we get is a bad guy who's just as bland as his arch enemies. In a nutshell, Galaxar is a giant example of wasted potential and is as bland a villain as the monsters are heroes. Galaxar might have been a little generic at times, but our next villain takes that to a whole new level. Earning that honor is Miss Grunion from Mr. Peabody and Sherman. When we say this villain is generic, know that we aren't joking. Grunion is your average mean-spirited teacher we've seen in countless animated movies and TV shows. She holds nothing but anger for both Peabody and Sherman. In particular, she wants to see Mr. Peabody arrested and plans on sending Sherman to an orphanage. A dog should never have been allowed to adopt a boy in the first place. Why does she dislike them so much? I don't know. Your guess is as good as ours. While Galaxar had a somewhat interesting backstory,
story to set him apart from most other characters that fit the whole evil alien invader template, there's truly nothing that makes Grunion different from other antagonist teachers and guardians in cartoons. She doesn't have an interesting backstory, she doesn't go through a unique character arc, nothing. The brief description of her character we gave you is pretty much all there is to her. Nothing more, nothing less. The only thing that gets Miss Grunion a leg above the remaining characters on this list is that most of them are even more generic than she is. If it doesn't say something about the quality of the forthcoming characters, or lack thereof, we don't know what would. Speaking of bland and uninspiring villains, let's take a trip to the Ant Hill for the next vile villain, General Mandible from DreamWorks' first CG animated film, Ants. The head of the Queen's army and one of the strongest ants to come out of the colony, Mandible is your average army general gone bad. He hates the weak, craves power, and has an aura of charisma to him. You know the rest. He's a bland villain, like we said, but that would be a little more forgivable if he were at least effective. Mandible is the general, after all, so you'd expect him to be a little threatening. Sadly for him, that is not the case, and it's not just because he's an ant, for starters. Mandible's plan makes no sense. His main mission is to wipe out all of the weak ants in the colony, leaving only the strong to survive. At first, that makes you know, some sense, but when you start to think about ants and their societies, holes start to appear in his plan. The weak ants are essentially the backbone of an ant colony. Without them, their society would cease to exist. Now, you could argue that most villain plans aren't all that logical, but considering this is a general we're talking about, it becomes a lot more egregious than it would be for other antagonists. He's supposed to be one of the smartest and strongest characters in the film, but his plan starts to fall apart when you think about it even a little. In the end, General Mandible isn't just a bland villain, but an ineffective one as well. He could have very well gotten a higher spot on this list, but we'll go a little easy on him since he was only the second villain DreamWorks had up to that point. And while his plan borders on nonsensical, it did have some creativity to it. That's more than we can say to the remaining characters on this list. The characters are only getting more and more generic as we dive into the sea to meet Lola from Shark Tale, a lionfish. Lola is a run-of-the-mill diva who only cares about fame and fortune. She goes after Oscar, the film's protagonist, in an effort to get just that, and later tries to get revenge on him after the two-part ways. Like Grunion or Mandible, she has a very generic storyline and character traits, but unlike them, Lola is in a far worse film. While those movies are far from being DreamWorks' best compared to Shark Tale, they look as great as Shrek 2. Lola also has easily one of the worst character designs for a villain in any of DreamWorks' movies. While most of the characters in this film aren't too pleasing to look at either, when you compare Lola to someone like Tai Lung from Kung Fu Panda, it just makes her design look even worse. Even compared to the other foes of this movie, she falls short. The main antagonist, Don Lino, has a far better design, has a more interesting character arc, and feels more like a genuine threat than Lola could ever hope to be. That's not to say Don doesn't have moments where he comes off as being a bit generic and underdeveloped, but when you put him and Lola side by side, you start to wonder how they went so wrong with her. You're cute. You're a nobody. Lola's just the perfect storm for an ineffective villain. What happens when you mix together bland characterization and uninteresting design and a cliche motivation? This lionfish is the dish you get. Still, there's a villain I'm thinking of who has her beat in the generic department, and that villain is Leighton Montgomery from B Movie. While we've looked at a lot of cliche villains today, Montgomery may very well have them all beat on that front. He's a businessman that's only interested in making money, regardless of who or what he has to exploit in order to turn a profit. The only thing I have to do to turn this jury around. If we could hand out an award for the most generic motivation you could give an animated villain, this would almost certainly be it. We feel the corrupt businessman is the weakest villain archetype for these types of films because they barely change between movies and that definitely holds true for our pal Layton here. If you've ever seen an animated film where the bad guy was a shady CEO, then you already know what this guy is like, even if you've never seen B-movie before. Even his character design feels like nothing new. How many evil businessmen in cartoons have looked just like this guy before? And while the likes of Lola and Grunion were also very paint by numbers, we at least got to spend a little bit of time with them in the movie. That made them feel a bit different from similar characters, if only slightly. Leighton is largely relegated to only one portion of the movie, so he doesn't get a chance to evolve nor be given depth, like, at all. Yet compared to our first place recipient, he's positively brimming with depth. Last, but certainly not least, depending on how you're looking at it, we have Guy Gagne from Turbo. It's often said that your villain is only as good as your hero. Say whatever you want about the prior DreamWorks movies, but you can't say their heroes weren't memorable, even if it wasn't always for the best of reasons. Turbo is a pretty run-of-the-mill hero, so it's only fitting that Guy Gagne is very much the same. At the beginning of the film, Turbo looks up to Guy as an idol, the racer he aspires to be. Give 
Give the people what they want. Let him race. When the two finally meet around the time of the Indy 500, Guy finally appears in the flesh. Want to take a wild guess as to how he's characterized? If you guessed pompous, vain, and egotistical, you deserve a medal. Or maybe not, as it's so unsurprising that you could see it coming from a mile away. Honestly, it feels as if Guy was supposed to be little more than the racer Turbo idolized, but after they realized the film needed a villain, they shoehorned him into that role. Pretty much the only time we get to interact with him is during the race, and at that point, there's so little time left in the film that we can barely delve into his character. He's as bland and milk toast as you can get for an animated villain. However, what really gets Guy this spot on our list is that he has nothing going for him in the slightest. For all of the other villains, we can think of at least one thing memorable about them. Maybe their design was interesting, they had good motivations, or at the bare minimum, the film they were featured in was entertaining. But with Guy Gagne, nothing about him stands out whatsoever, be it his design, his attitude, nor the film he originated from. It's one thing to be a bad antagonist, but it's another thing to be bad and forgettable. That's where Gagne goes wrong, and it's what gets him first place on our list of worst DreamWorks villains. 